and it is such a hot topic issue. I want to know more about the red light therapy. The biggest thing is it can be effective in the three to six month time frame, but the long term effects have not been studied. If you have something at home where you can do this every day, it can be effective. I, I actually personally used red light um, when I was postpartum, like in the first two weeks. I was so sore and I was desperate because I was like, I don't even know. Externally, there is no internal type of red light treatment. Exercise is the only thing. I'm always like, PT is like one piece of the puzzle. Years ago, this was like a laser therapy, like it was called the Mona Lisa. So we need good hygiene, muscle care, proactive tips. It can be medications, it can be devices. And that recipe is different for everybody. I want to know more about the red light therapy because we yeah. do use it in Durham all of the time. And it is such a hot topic issue. Yeah. And uh, we use it as germs on our skin every single day. So like, how do you do? You, do I just like spread my legs and put my red light mask <laughs> underneath <laughs> here I mean, I mean, you and can turn it on? It. Yeah. <laughs> what, I mean, what do we need to know? Because people are going to do that if you don't tell us what to do. <laughs> most so most often these are um, in in gynecology offices or urogyn practices where they can have the device and they can use it on um, the vulva and vagina. And there's just been a handful, like very small clinical trials. Um, mm -hmm. The biggest thing is it can be effective in the three to six month time frame, but the long term effects have not been studied. Mm -hmm. So again, if you have something at home where you can do this every day, it can be effective. But they don't have these devices available for home use. And there's no FDA clearance for that yet. And it's um, you have to be willing to kind of do that long term. The great thing about these red light masks are that like you can lay in your bed and do them and kind of even whatever. With the vulva and vagina, it just takes a little bit more like dedication and time. Like uh -huh. you got to really clear out some space and get some privacy and like, you know, right. do the whole bit in your bed and you can't move. But if, yeah, I mean, there are some PT practices that use it. There's Eurogyne offices, but there's not a lot of options for home use. But I tell people like, you can you do this, but you just have to also know that you have to do other stuff. You still right. have to know how to engage the muscles, relax the muscles, that kind know, of stuff. Know your limitations, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. You know like, where, let's be realistic about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I did. I I actually personally used red light um, when I was postpartum, like in the first two weeks. I was so sore and I was desperate because I was like, I don't even know what to do. And I have a red light box that was given to me from a brand, Lumi. And I just, I was like, I'm just gonna try this. Like, I didn't even know it was something that could be utilized on there, but you know, it's red light helps with wound healing. So I would just like hold the box down there and I think it helped, but that's just N of one. So, you know, don't go everyone <laughs> buying red light boxes. No, but, but this is good to you know. know. Yeah. It's yeah, good to know. And I it think it's helpful. one of the things that if we know it could be for wound healing, mm -hmm. that could be helpful. If we know it could be for, um, certain types of symptoms, whether it's, you know, prolapse or incontinence or, um, and like soreness, you know, like joint fragile, you know, right. Yeah. So I think we just need more information on how to do it. You know, mm -hmm. it's one of those things though, Mamina, that I think it's like, it still kind of falls into this like wellness thing. And I think I'm always yeah. so focused on function, like healing, yeah. like minimizing pain and, and, and improving muscle tone that I just am like, I want to, you know, always tell people like, hey, if you're going to go spend the money on this, I want to make sure it's going to be effective for oh, you. Yeah, 100%. No, totally, totally get it. I feel like it's very much the same for Derm too, because like, you know, devices we use, we recommend, but like we always say, like, don't rely on this as your only like, and don't expect miracles. Like you have to have a good skincare routine, right? You got to wear your sunscreen, right? And then maybe use a retinol. And then like, if you've kind of maximized that and want to elevate, then uh -huh. I think that like the masks would be helpful. So it sounds yeah, like so we need a Volvo similar. mask. We need yeah, to grab my So is there all does it only help externally? There is no internal type of red light treatment that you could use, as you had mentioned, like a tampon that you insert to more directly affect the pelvic floor. Does that exist? There, yeah, there are. There are laser wands. And that's what's wow. available in, I think, Eurogyne or gyne offices wow. where, or urology offices where it's a wand that you can insert. Um, you know, years ago, this was like a laser therapy, like it was called the Mona Lisa. And there's so been, there's been different things that have come out. And so there are internal wands that you can use as well. Okay, that's a that's an idea for someone who wants to yeah, <laughs> have a device. Be, <laughs> be good. And I love that. I mean, I think for like yeah. a postpartum population, that would be amazing. For a menopausal population, that would be amazing. I mean, I think there's a lot of use cases where it's like if we can get the research to like say, hey, these are great things to use. I would love mm -hmm. that. I mean, I think we're always looking for ways to 
um, help people. And I don't think that exercise is the only thing. I'm always like Mm -hmm. PT is like one piece of the puzzle. We need, again, good hygiene, muscle Mm -hmm. care, um, you know, proactive tips. It can be medications, Mm -hmm. it can be devices. So, and that recipe is different for everybody. So Mm -hmm. what I love are options for people. And that's where I really think that we can say like, how do we best optimize your pelvic care with like the options that we have? Yeah, no, so cool. I feel like, you know, there's like the term like vaginal, like rejuvenation. I feel like this mask would kind of really fit that. Because I feel like as, as we age too, like the skin gets thinner and you're more prone to like bleeding with intercourse or just say it's itchy, more dry, especially around menopause. So I can definitely ma- imagine this being very popular maybe amongst like the perimenopause or menopausal population even. Totally. Like the wound healing benefits like postpartum. Yeah. So Well, it's fantastic. interesting too because, you know, topic like we're kind of, there's so much buzz about perimenopause and menopause, which I love mm-hmm. being someone who's mm-hmm. entering perimenopause or already in it. And I think that, um, again, it's one of those things where we're really trying to have to push the system to be more proactive. Like, does your vagina need to shrivel up and dry and bleed and have pain with sex until you get vaginal estrogen? Or can we just start giving people that a little bit sooner so they don't have to get to that point? And I think it's really kind of pushing, you know, the system forward to be like, how do we care for women proactively instead of feeling like we're waiting till there's a problem and then we're trying to like you know backtrack so um i'm a huge fan of vaginal estrogen huge 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 i think it's really beneficial for people and you know we get one pelvic floor and we need it to last like 70 80 90 years so like we gotta pull in those puzzle pieces Mm -hmm. to really care for it